LeeTDickey.com. Do you have an event or occasion coming up that could use a special touch? Perhaps a wedding, a production, a show? Good! Then you're in luck. Haley Moores is who you're looking for. Haley is a makeup artist in the Toronto, Ontario area, specializing in bridal, glam, natural, and special effects. She's incredibly talented, professional, easy to work with, and has a personality that is second to none. To book Haley Moores today, Follow her on Instagram at mad underscore malash, that's M-A-D underscore M-I-L-A-S-H, or email her at madmalash, again, that's M-A-D-M-I-L-A-S-H, at gmail.com. Book Haley Moore's today, you'll be glad you did. LeeTDickey.com LeeTDickey.com Do you find yourself reminiscing on what life was like when you were younger? Do your favorite songs, movies, and TV shows instantly take you back to a simpler time? Great, then you're in the right place. Join me, Lee Dickey, on my new web series and podcast, Yo Nostalgia, where I cover everything you grew up with. From films and toys to fads and trends, Yo Nostalgia has it all. Subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever podcasts are available. Follow along on social media at Yo Nostalgia Show to keep up on this time traveling trip. Yo Nostalgia, breathing new life into your memories, available everywhere now. LeeTDickey.com. LeeTDickey.com. Do you enjoy good conversation? Are you a person with many passions? Perfect. Then the Beats and Speaks podcast is for you. Join me, Lee Dickey, every Friday for stories and interviews about everyday life with everyday people about everyday things. Everyone has a story, and I just want to help them tell it. The Beats and Speaks podcast, your everyday life, everyday stories, everyday people, comedy and entertainment audio joyride. Subscribe and download on LeeTDickey.com, Lee Dickey TV on YouTube, and your favorite podcast app. The Beats and Speaks podcast, available everywhere now. LeeTDickey.com LeeTDickey.com What's going on everybody? Lee Dickey here. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Beats and Speaks podcast. Today, this week, I want to tell you the story or the many stories of me falling in love with out of love with, and back in love with Halloween right here this week on the Beats and Speaks podcast. But before we get into the main event, before we get into my sort of sordid love affair with Halloween, I want to tell you where you can find the Beats and Speaks podcast. Of course, brand new episodes of the Beats and Speaks podcast are released every single Friday on my official website, LeeTDickey.com, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and wherever podcasts are available. Please do comment, like, share, and subscribe. Rate us five stars and leave us reviews too if you would. Find us on YouTube as well under Lee Dickey TV. Of course, all the links will be in the description and show notes down below. Follow along on social media at Lee T. Dickey. Send emails to Lee T. Dickey at gmail.com. All right, now that all the housekeeping is out of the way and you know where to find me, Lee Dickey, and the Beats and Speaks podcast, let's get into the main event, get into why you are really here, and that is my love affair with Halloween, falling in love with it, falling out of love with it, and eventually back in love with Halloween right here, right now, on a brand new episode of the Beats and Speaks podcast. All right, so yes, my falling in love with, out of love with, and then eventually back in love with Halloween, my sordid love affair with the one day spooky holiday i i don't know what to tell you i fell in love with it as a kid because free candy who doesn't love free candy you don't love free candy you should probably go see your doctor every kid loves chocolate every kid loves sweet stuff every kid loves candy and all that sort of goodness okay everybody loves it i don't know anybody that doesn't necessarily love chocolate or the sweets doesn't have a sweet tooth if you don't have a sweet tooth like, you can have occasional sweets, right? But if you're anything like me, you love chocolate, you love anything sweet, because I do. I am super sweet, and that's not just because the amount of sugar that's in my bloodstream 
Thank you for all the free Halloween candy over the years to my neighbors, friends, family, and so on. But, I mean, I love Halloween as a kid just because, you know, it was just something you did. Halloween is for the kids, right? So Halloween is for the kids and, you know, that's what it's all for. It's for their enjoyment. Give them the free candy. And I, I probably trick-or-treated from as early as I could, maybe like one up until the age of 12. We moved once, maybe, or no, we moved like twice um, by the time I had stopped trick-or-treating. I mean, you know, by the time, by the time my last year of actually going out as a trick-or-treater, as somebody that wanted the free candy, uh, came around, I was just so burnt out. Like, I didn't have any costume ideas. Like, that last year where I went out trick-or-treating, there was no such thing as cosplay back then. Um, it just, you threw on what you could, and you reused the same costume year after year. And, uh, I, I don't know. It's just, I didn't necessarily like it anymore. I didn't want to to do it I just didn't have the same passion for it I didn't like I threw on a vest from my dad's old uh, Dracula costume a trucker hat and you know I think we went to a dollar store and bought like some fangs if that and I just popped them in and it was just like so what are you supposed to be and I'm like what am I going to tell you uh, a confused trucker, you know, I, I really had no idea, or like, you know, something out of the movie Office Space back in those days, because that had come out, I think, a couple years prior, and I, I just was like, I, I don't know what to tell you, I, what am I supposed to be, just somebody that wants the free candy, I mean, it was imaginative on my part, because it was just an amalgamation of various things thrown together, but I'm not surprised that a lot of people didn't get it, and probably a lot of people thought it was weird, and I really can't blame them for that because it was. But I just kind of was like, okay, we'll throw anything at the wall and see if it sticks. And when I got little candy, but I just didn't, you know, when I was growing up in the neighborhood uh, that I was in and that I still am in now, there weren't many kids around, right? When we got to the neighborhood, there were a lot of people that were either retired or approaching retirement, so they were roughly like early to mid 60s or like 50, easily 50 plus. I think at the time we were one of the youngest families on the street. Both my parents at the time were in their, my mom was in her 40s, my dad was probably yeah they were both in their 40s like mid to late 40s at the time and we were probably the youngest family on the street there was one other uh, couple at the time across the street that had just had a baby about three months before we moved in and you know it wasn't Halloween wasn't a big thing because a lot of the people were at least 50 plus and kept their lights off for that one day out of the year but after you know stopping going out you know after I turned 12 I just figured you know for a few years I'd hand out the candy and I actually really enjoyed that because I could wear jeans and a vest and you know just sit on my porch with some music I had a CD player like a personal CD player in those days and I actually had Daisy chained it to the our porch light, which had an outlet in it. So I turned the porch light on, plugged my uh, CD player in, and had CDs and the radio going for, I probably did that for about five years. And then, you know, I got out of high school and into college and post-secondary education, and life just kind of got busy. Plus, as I got older, like, my mom didn't really want to do it anymore. She was just like, I don't feel like going to buy candy and handing out treats to the kids so we just haven't done it for several years and you know to be fair like I really loved it when I was a kid maybe say around five or six years old 
simply because I was a big fan of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers because I am of that age group. I am of that generation. I'm old enough to remember when the show first hit the air in late 1993, and I've been a fan ever since. So, you know, back in, say, 1995, I was about uh, six years old, and the movie had just come out, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie featuring Ivan Ooze, if you will, and the introduction of their ninja powers, those mystical ninja powers, or whatever you want to call them. But I was a big fan of the movie and a big fan of the White Ranger at the time, the character Tommy Oliver, played by Jason David Frank. Still am, by the way. Not ashamed to admit that. But back in those days, I don't know, like the costumes weren't as easy to assemble. And, you know, I had to wear leg braces in those days. So getting my costume over the leg braces, not easy. Getting into the costume because it was a one piece. It was supremely difficult. And forget about going to the bathroom. I mean, if I had to go, it was an entire adventure just to get the costume off, go to the bathroom, do my business, put the costume back on, and then, you know, go about my the rest of my day. It was, uh, it was a bit cumbersome. Don't get me wrong. I thought it was a great costume. A lot of people didn't get it because I think a lot of people in the neighborhood that we lived in back then didn't necessarily know what the Power Rangers were or were a bit older and just weren't watching the show. So, whatever. A lot of people thought I was a ghost in those days. Like, if I still... I don't know if I have any photos of the costume. I mean, if I do, I'll find them and I'll post them probably. But a lot of people didn't get it because either they didn't have access to the show, they weren't fans of the show, and thought I was something else. Somebody thought I was Casper the Friendly Ghost. Whatever, I'll go with it. You know, I learned pretty early on that if somebody says you're something, you know, and it's just, say, about your clothing or whatever, just roll with it. Like, whatever. If he thinks it's, I'm a ghost, fine, whatever. I don't feel like getting into... I don't, I don't feel like explaining things all that much. I, I never... Like, fine, if you think I'm a ghost because I'm wearing white cloth, all right, cool, whatever. It's nothing I can do about that, right? So I just went with it, you know, and my... Um, my parents obviously wanted to correct the kids, and they tried to, and it just didn't work. And I'm like, okay, whatever, no big deal. Um, after that, like, I remember going to school in costume, and I thought it was great. You know, just you getting to hang out with your friends in school and go trick or treating in the hall, like during school hours. That was cool. That I really loved. Falling out of love with it though. Um, again, I was say. 12, 13, 14, and I just didn't, I felt like I was too old for it, like, I, I don't need to go out trick-or-treating anymore, this isn't about, like, candy for me, it's, Halloween has always been for the kids, and I felt like, you can still classify me a kid at, like, 12, 13, 14, but mentally, I think, I was, I felt a bit too old to trick-or-treat, so, from the age, like I said earlier, of 13 through 18, I handed out the candy, because I really enjoyed that, now, these days, yes, there are kids on the street, but because my mom doesn't want to hand out candy anymore and doesn't want really many people stopping by, I can't really say, you know, we're going to do it because she just doesn't want to and I can't necessarily blame her. It is what it is. I mean, maybe someday I'll get back into the swing of things if I have my own family one day and have a bunch of kids running around and, and whatever, if like, you know... If I move neighborhoods, if I stay in the same neighborhood, I don't know. And, you know, Halloween is still a thing. Why not have a bunch of kids? I mean, that's fine, right? I don't have a problem with that. Let's just, you know, go around trick-or-treating. Let's hand out the candy again. I actually miss that, you know. And because I felt a bit, like mentally at least, a bit too old to enjoy Halloween, I just didn't. I would show up on days where, like, the schools that I was at, they would let you dress up. But back in those days, after I stopped going out as a trick-or-treater, we didn't have costumes in the house anymore. So I didn't necessarily have a costume. So I'd show up and say, like, my regular civvies, even though, like, a couple of the schools that I went to had a uniform policy. No problem. But it was like I just show up in my regular clothes and people would always ask, like, who are you supposed to be? Me, myself, and I. Okay, if De La Soul has taught me anything, it's me, myself, and I. 
So I would always say that I was just me, myself, and I. Because I'm wearing jeans and a sweater in those days because it's October, right? It's cold. There was one particular time I remember I actually went back to my old elementary school as a co-op student in high school because there was one period in my life where I thought, hey, let's go to teacher's college and become a teacher. And I was, It was a confusing time for me back in those days, okay? Don't throw shade my way. Not for that anyway. But obviously I was working in the junior and senior kindergarten rooms. Working in the junior and senior kindergarten rooms in those days, and I thought, okay, well, no big deal. Halloween comes around, and all the kids get dressed up in their costumes, because again, Halloween is strictly for the kids. I don't care what you say, it is strictly for the kids. Let them have all the free candy. Let them have all the chocolate. No big deal. So, you know, I'm working as a co-op student, basically as a teacher's aide, and, you know, I'm doing whatever they ask, which is, it's a great, I mean, I had fond memories of the school, you know, I had no problem doing what they asked me to do, and when it came to Halloween, again, no costumes, because I hadn't had to worry about Halloween in several years, aside from, like, getting done up on actual Halloween night in jeans, a jacket, a sweater, and, you know, turn my stereo and my uh, porch light on to have the kids come up and trick or treat you want the candy all right here you go kid you know what i mean that was it that that was my costume it was jeans sweater jacket and my stereo right i was it was such a cool time because i was just chilling on my porch you know while they would come up to me i mean there were a couple times where the kids were a bit timid uh, to actually approach the house and i'm sure they've done that with other houses so there were a couple times where I went down to meet the kids and, you know, put the, gave them the candy and put them in, the, in their little baskets or buckets there, which was fine with me. I didn't mind. I mean, the kid obviously wanted to come up, but it was a bit too scared. No big deal. And I just, you know, would drop the candy in their bucket. So there was that. But when it came to dealing with the kids that I was a, a teacher's aide for when I was at my old elementary school as a co-op student, I didn't have a costume and what I basically came up with was I have black athletic sweatpants with a white stripe down the side of the leg. I can wear running shoes and the top was a sweatshirt for a former like local Toronto area soccer team what the rest of the world calls football if you're in the uk and europe but it was a local toronto soccer team who i don't think exists anymore because i think the league folded a long time ago and sweatpants and some kid one of the kids asked me so what's your costume you supposed to be a soccer player i went his name's not jimmy but it was like yes jimmy that's exactly what i am we're gonna go with it right i mean the kids if they're going to say it, I'll let them say it. They're four and five years old at that point. No big deal. You want to think I'm a soccer player? All right, Jimmy. That's all you, right? Thank you. I appreciate it. You think I'm dressed up? No, boss. This is just like my, this is my attempt at getting dressed up, I guess. These are just regular clothes. And uh, I remember the teachers that I was working with back in those days. I think one teacher came in wearing a tiara and the other one maybe like a Mardi Gras mask of some sort. And that's about the extent of getting dressed up in those days as you're getting into, say, like, young adulthood for me. And even for, the te you know, the teachers I was working with who are, like, well into adulthood. So, no big deal there. I mean, you know, I guess I just fell out of love with it because I felt too old with it. Or too, uh, too old for it, sorry. And uh, I, I don't know. I just I didn't want to... And because, like mom, you know, doesn't want to hand out candy and doesn't want people stopping by, I just kind of, yeah, all right, whatever, I'll go along with it, because, I mean, she's my mother, and what she says goes, so I just kind of, eh, okay, whatever, no big deal, right, it's not something where I'm like, okay, we have to do it, I mean, if you don't want them to, I'm not going to force you to, you know, go buy the candy and have the kids come by, I mean, I could go buy it, but at the same time, like, 
do I even want kids to come by? I mean, I know that Halloween's for the kids, but at the same time, like, do I want to cause a rift or a ruckus between, you know, anybody else that lives in the house and myself? And quite frankly, I do not. So I just kind of go along with the plan. And, you know, I guess falling back in love with it happened by complete accident. I was going down the YouTube rabbit hole one day and came across a bunch of cosplay stuff and I always thought cosplay was cool if it's done right, if it's done correctly, and you see people that are really passionate about it, that want to get dressed up and get done up as a character, good for them, right? And I, I came across a lot of uh, accounts on Instagram that were just, wow. Like, I, I know there was one that really got me into, like, how cosplay could be done tastefully and done the right way. And that was, I think her name is Diana T. Chen. I think it's at Diana T. Chen on Instagram. I don't, I'm not sure if she does like cosplay anymore, but I came across that stuff. Because um, again, like she's a big fan of the Power Rangers and like various other forms of cosplay. Like I've seen her in other costumes. I think she's out in Los Angeles. But that really, I was like, wow. Like she really pulls it off and it, it really looks convincing. It, it looks done really well and another one i think currently does this is kenta de force on instagram um i will if i can find their accounts i will link them below but they both do really awesome like just sort of power ranger cosplays and other forms of cosplay as well there are other forms of cosplay out there i know that the joker is a big sort of character that a lot of people go for around halloween and you know maybe even I have a, a former teacher that uh, I had in high school goes around dressed up as Jason uh, on Halloween night, which I think is really cool. And, you know, like uh, costuming and cosplaying and Halloween, they've grown sort of leaps and bounds when it comes to like the creativity that you can pull off, even if it's just for one night. And I suppose like going to comic cons and stuff like that have helped costuming and Halloween as an industry or like even as just a one day holiday overall and I suppose that's what really got me back into it I mean recently I picked up two Joker masks and a Michael Myers mask because I am a big fan of the Joker uh, he is my favorite Batman character and when it comes to like say my favorite person to play the Joker I'll get into that in another uh, another episode on the Beats and Speaks podcast uh, Michael Myers, I'm a big fan of Halloween from 1978. I think it's really well done. Um, Halloween 2, like that as well, but I haven't really seen anything after Halloween 2. I haven't seen Season of the Witch through, like, the current, uh, the most recent sort of film in the franchise, or the most recent film within the, uh, that is considered, like, a remake, I suppose. I've never, you know, I'm not sure about, you know, watching the Rob Zombie films, to Halloween, but, you know, maybe one day I'll give it a shot, um, and perhaps, like, this, tis the season to get reacquainted with the Halloween franchise, so Michael Myers is always one of my favorite characters, I picked up one of those masks, and a couple Joker masks, just because, you know, see how my creative juices will flow this year, and in years to come, but there it is, the story of my sordid love affair with Halloween, falling in love with it, out of love with it, and back in love with it, and the reasons why. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Of course, I am your host, Lee Dickey. This has been another episode of the Beats and Speaks podcast. Remember to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Find us on YouTube under Lee Dickey TV, my official website, LeeTDickey.com, and wherever podcasts are available. Please do rate us five stars and leave us reviews as well. If you would, please, and thank you again to get in touch with me and the show Tweet me and find me on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff, at Lee T. Dickey. Send me emails to LeeTDickey at gmail.com, and we will see you all and talk to you all next Friday for a brand new episode of the Beats and Speaks podcast. All the information is down in the description. Remember, keep your eyes glued to my official website as well, LeeTDickey.com. All right, I've been Lee Dickey. This wraps up another episode of the Beats and Speaks podcast. We'll see you all next week. Peace. Lee T.
tdickey.com.